So come on, tell us about your trip to America. Yeah, Gus and I have been waiting to hear about your experience. Guys, it was simply fantastic. How was San Francisco? Among these we visited in California, I think San Francisco is the most unique. Oh, why would you say that? I thought all the cities in America were unique. Yes, every city is unique and has its own history, but San Francisco has something magical about it. Well, tell us about the other participants. You know, Vina and I were the only two Southeast Asians selected. <laughs> That's great! So, how many of you were there anyway? Altogether, there were eight of us on this trip. Apart from us, there was one girl from Czech Republic, another girl from China, two boys were from France, and two other boys from Russia. That's quite a combination. Well, I'm sure Gus and I would have had added to the fun plenty if we were there. Marvin, I thought we weren't going to discuss that anymore. That's okay. Lena and I actually miss your snide remarks, Marvin. <laughs> The other boys were just so polite. <laughs> Too bad Lena is ill. Would love to hear her about you know her experience on the trip. Oh, she will have a lot to tell you guys. Mm. I think it was the erratic weather that got her down. Oh, that and the hectic schedule. Yes, that too. You know, everyone has a dream of doing something sometime. <sighs> yes. Mine was a strip. So, Aunt Mabel, what are we going to study today? Today, we are going to learn about subject-verb agreement. Sounds familiar, but refresh my mind, please. Sure. Now, a verb in a sentence must always agree with its subject, be it in number or person. So, in simple language, a singular verb must always go with a singular subject. And a plural verb must go with a plural subject? Correct, Marvin. However, there are some exceptions, but we'll go into that a bit later. Now, for now, let me give you a sentence in the singular form so that you can see what I mean. Now, let's take the three of you. Marvin, Zurida and I. That's right. And here is the sentence. Each of you has a unique talent. Oh, I got this. Although there are three of us, which is many, the word each of you is considered singular, so we have to use the word has, which is a singular verb. You are right. Now, let's look at other similar examples. Among the cities we visited in California, I think San Francisco is the most unique. San Francisco is singular, so we have to use is. The singular verb must agree with the singular subject. That is right. Now, let's look at other similar examples. Yes, every city is unique and has its own history, but San Francisco has something magical about it. Okay, here. Every city is a singular subject, so it must go with singular verbs. Is and has. Every city is unique and has its own history. Correct. Now, Try this. You know, everyone has a dream of doing something sometime. Everyone is considered a singular verb, so we use has. That is correct. Now, let's look at some examples using the plural subject verb agreement. Yeah, Gus and I have been waiting to hear about your experience. <laughs> Piece of cake, Gus and I are plural. So we have, we have to use have, just like we used has for the singular subject earlier. You are right. 
Now, here is something that Zurida said, and I like her lines because it uses both the singular and plural subject verb combinations. Altogether, there were eight of us on this trip. The, apart from us, there was, there was one girl from Czech Republic and another girl from China. Two boys were from France and two boys were from Russia. Wow, there were quite a few examples there. Let's take the first line. There were eight participants, so that's a plural subject. So we have to use the verb were. Good. Next, she mentions one girl from the Czech Republic. So we use, we use the singular form of the verb was to go with the singular subject. Right again. And in the third sentence, I talk about two boys from France. So that's again a plural subject and must have a plural verb to go with it. Were. Two boys were. Very good, kids. Guys, I called you here today because I have a teeny weeny favor to ask. Sure, anything but borrowing money. Yeah, because we will have to ask you instead. Since Marvin and I are always broke. <laughs> Since Lena is feeling a bit under the weather, I, I was hoping you guys could help me write my report on the America trip. Oh, sure, with resident professor English here, it should be no problem at all. Resident professor. <laughs> That's a nice ring to it. Okay, where do we start? Okay. Tell me if I'm right with my first line. This report has been prepared by Lina Hashim and Zurira Jalil. That's correct. Yeah. You have good subject verb agreement there. The word report is singular, so you use the word has. But Lina and I prepared it, so that makes two of us. So should we not use have instead? No. Zu, look at your sentence again. Is the subject the word report or is it the two of you? Oh, I get it. We have to look at the sentence to see which is the subject we are referring to. And based on whether the subject is singular or plural, we add the appropriate verb. Correct. Now tell me if this is right. The organizing committee were at the airport to welcome all the participants. No, no, no. That's incorrect. The word were is inappropriate. Why? The committee has many members. Does not, doesn't that make the word committee a plural subject? Well, the word committee is what we call a collective noun. Although it has many members, the word committee itself is considered singular. Oh, okay. I get it. So my sentence should be the organizing committee was at the airport to welcome all the participants. Yep. So, Zoo, can you name any other collective nouns? Uh, what about team? Yes, team is a good collective noun. Another one would be congregation. And, and the word group. Very Very nice. Good. Now, I think it's time our group had a little something to eat. Come on guys, I'm buying. Thanks Zoo, nothing like free food. So boys and girls, throughout this lesson you have seen some good combinations of subject-verb agreements. Let's look again at what subject-verb agreements mean. A verb in a sentence should always agree with the subject, be it a number or in person. This means a singular verb must go with a singular subject. For example, everyone has, every city is.
and a plural verb should go with a plural subject. Like, all cities are Gus and I have. And also remember that some words may seem like plural words, like for example, committee, which is what Zurida used in her report. These are called collective nouns. Mm. Like group, team, organization. And as always, remember, the more you use a language, the better you will be in it. Bye! <laughs>